I'm so happy to see everybody. I'm Andy Mizels. I'm from the JCC Association. I'm the director of special projects and it's been a really fun, um, fun, fun year. What a ridiculous comment, but it's been a really fun opportunity, to meet, opportunity for me this year because I was sort of assigned to go back to my roots in camping and to spend a lot of time with our overnight camp folks. And I really did enjoy that. Um, so here you are, you're in the camp peer community session, back to camp into the bubble. If this is not where you intended to be, then you can go back to spot me and find the place you're supposed to be. But these names and camps sound pretty familiar to me. Um, joining me today from JCC Association is my colleague, Janine Acevedo, who is program assistant. Um, our names appear as hosts at the top of your participant list. If you have any issue or any question for us, you can contact us directly. Um, and a few announcements before we start, please bear with me. I think you're probably getting used to these by now <laughs> if you've been, if you were with us yesterday. Um, and I also wanna, I, I make the commercial that for the overnight camp folks, we've been meeting so regularly in all kinds, you know, all kinds of, not everybody has been at everything, but we've really been together a lot in the last year. So this feels very familiar to me and certainly to all of you, I think. So, but I, you know, gotta do the announcements. So the session is being recorded. Uh, we know that some people prefer not to be recorded, in which case turn off your camera, but we really like it when we have everybody's, everybody's face is showing. I feel like we've been through a lot this year, so if, if you're willing to keep your um, video on, that would be great. It feels like we're together. Uh, we also want everyone to feel welcome at ProCon, and again, as camp people, this is you are expert at building inclusive spaces where everybody is, feels safe, respected, and included. So we encourage you, if you'd like to, uh, rename yourself in Zoom so we, we know your name and your camp we'd like just so we get a perspective of you know where we are geographically, who's in the room. If you'd like to add your preferred personal pronouns, please do so. We have enabled closed captioning. You have the option to turn it off using the button on the bottom toolbar. So if it's distracting to you, you can turn it off. Um, and if there's, again, anything else you think we can do to be helpful, reach out to Janine or me. Uh, we are very happy to offer the conference at no cost to our JCCs. We are very grateful to our generous sponsors who believe in our work and their folks are available. You can contact them throughout the conference and you can go to the virtual vendor hall again, which will be open on uh, tomorrow, not on tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, I, I'm, I'm in reminding people that the JCamp 180 Grinspoon people are here. So, you know, it might be a good idea to just pop by and say hello. Um, and now we can get on to the session and the reason you're with us today. I am really, I, I could not be more pleased and that's like, that's a thing people say, but I really mean it. I could not be more pleased to introduce our presenters for this session, Dr. Danny Klein and Lee Trepic. These, what I'm gonna do now in these intros is very brief. It doesn't come near what either of them deserves. There's a tiny bit more in the bio section on the, um, on the platform, on the Spot Me platform. Um, but I also suggest you Google them um, and find out more. So Lee really is family here. Lee is currently the CEO of Tamarack Camps. He served previously as director of Camp Moss, where he started in 2009. Very involved in the D Detroit Jewish community on various committees, leadership roles. He, I, was, I was very interested to learn that he brings to this work a very varied and ex extensive background, which includes a law degree and experience in real estate. What more could you want? Uh, the only thing you need to be is a chef and then you don't need to hire anybody else for your camp. Um, Danny has been a fantastic friend and partner to us at JCC Association. He has stepped up in so many different ways as has his team, which you will know if you come on Friday to the Kabbalat Shabbat for the Jaffe Shlichim. And we're very grateful that he agreed to participate in the session. And to, he's really the facilitator here. I'm just doing the niceties. Um, our guest and our, our really our featured speaker today is Dr. Daniel Klein. Danny is a licensed psychologist and he's founder of the Child and Family Solutions Center in Farmington Hills, Michigan. He spent a long time working with children, adolescents and families. He's made uh, many local TV appearances. He previously wrote the Ask the Child Psychologist column for the Detroit News. Previously? I don't know, Danny, stop <laughs> doing that. <laughs> um, he's a busy guy. Uh, he serves as a board vice president for Tamarack Camps, and he's been very important with them in their COVID response. Last spring, he published a very widely read article on coping with the closures of camps, which we'll, which we'll put in the chat later on. 
Um, and Danny, as a result, you know, he's no stranger to us because he was kind enough to come to our cohort at the overnight and day camps, if you recall, in the late spring of 2020. I know you were all in a very difficult space at that time. It was just as people were beginning to make the decisions to run, to not run. And I remember when we had that call, we had about every day we were, you know, sending out notices of who had made the difficult decision. And on that call, it was about 50% were there and 50% were deciding. Um, and Danny really helped everybody acknowledge the pain and the grief in those decisions. Uh, Danny and Lee are both camp lifers, like most of the folks on this call. We're very lucky to have them with us today. Danny, we get to do all the positive piece of this now after the difficult stuff last time. One last housekeeping issue and then I'm quiet. We're gonna have plenty of time for questions and answers. We have 27 folks, which is a very nice showing. Thank you, six to eight weeks before your opening camp. Um, we can be a little bit spontaneous here. We can also, I will encourage you, to, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat as we're going along. You can send them privately to me and then I can sort of, uh, you know, make categories and, and bring them forth. Or we may be more spontaneous. Lee will decide, maybe we'll just open up, have people on mute and ask them themselves. I feel like I haven't met hardly any of you in person, but I see your names all the time. I've seen you all year and I feel like, you know, we can really be, uh, you know, intimate here and not be so formal. Um, you, and you can also use the raise hand uh, device later if Lee gives us that, uh, <laughs> that option. Okay, we're gonna leave it to you. And with that, I am finished with the introductions and I'm very pleased to turn things over to Lee. Lee, it's up to you. Thank you, Andy. What, uh, what an honor to be here. Uh, Andy, I just wrote your words. We could be spontaneous here, quote unquote. Here's what happened when we were planning something. Does everybody see? This says 1210, I've circled it, meet at 1210 p.m. And we did, uh, we huddled. Here's what happened. Danny said at his office, uh-oh, uh, I think I have an unstable internet connection. And we said, no problem. Maybe log off, log back on. Danny did both. When he logged back on, he said, I'm out. We said, oh, we've got a presentation. He said, yep, I'm out of my office. I'll be at my house in 10. Danny called in during our 1210 huddle. At 1212, my internet said, unstable. I said, oh my God, I'm so connected to Danny Klein that our wires are speaking to each other. Andy said, no problem. She's great. She said, log off, log back on. I did. I said, you know what? I'm out. I think I'm gonna have to go to my office. She said, no, no. Do you have a different device? Is there anything else you could log on to? I said, you know what? I'm going to try. I did. Janine on the other end of the line said, wait a minute. I think we have it. But you're on here twice. We spent the next five minutes trying to get me off twice and Danny back on once. At 1228, we were connected. At 1230, we opened the screen. Thank you all for joining us. This is the reality of the world we're living. I did not fabricate times to exaggerate a story. I'm giving you the times in which our event began. And now I'll tell you this, it is my time, Andy, to say thank you for what you have planned and what you and Janine worked with us tirelessly to put forward, we're grateful. Uh, and I wanna say thank you to the JCCA Mishpacha, which continues to offer programmings uh, for all of us in a different way. And for all the others on the screen that I see, this is my honor. Uh, to share a screen with you and to say that I believe we're all leading uh, the direction of the future while we live within these present times. And I'm humbled by how many names I see on the screen that I've had the chance to learn from. And I'm grateful for that. Uh, Danny, I'm grateful that I continue to uh, learn from you. Uh, we had the pleasure, and I know you've seen this as well, to learn from Maggie and Aaron a couple of weeks ago in what really was like a precursor to a topic that is so relevant in today's times. It's trauma, it's nervousness, it's anxiety, and it's all unfolding in real time, unchartered. And you've been helping us to chart a course. Um, what a privilege to sit with you, Danny, who I'm now looking at directly on my screen, a, a specialist in behavior changes and challenges, uh, someone who has navigated emotional difficulties and adjustment issues. Uh, you've been and continue to be a consultant to so many schools and camps, including Tamarack camps. So many children, adults, and families continue to say, 
I've spoken to Dr. Danny Klein. I feel better. I'm honored to say that you've made me feel better as a friend and as a professional colleague. So with that, Danny, uh, let's begin to share a little bit more. Tell us personally uh, about your uh, background so that we can understand what drives you in your own home. Sure, Thank, thanks Lee. And um, my adrenaline I think has finally come down. For the record, I only live 10 minutes from my office. So um, I did go the speed limit or maybe a few miles over the speed limit, but we made it, got, got set up and um, are good to go. And first of all, I wanna thank um, Andy and Janine and the JCCA um, for giving me this opportunity to be with you. It's kind of like closing a circle a year ago. I sat with so many in this cohort who were going through, as Andy said, a really tough time. I was feeling it as a lay leader, as a parent. And I know everyone on this call was feeling, doing something that seemed so unthinkable about pondering whether to run a camp sum or something, you know, that we never would have crossed our minds. It's nice to kind of come back during a different time when we have so much energy going into restarting, restarting the summer. So appreciate that and appreciate everybody on the call today. On the call, you're living my dream job with this summer camp professional. And I think this is as close as I'll ever get to it, but I'm very privileged to be with this group and see a lot of TAMRAC faces on here as well as some TAMRAC alumni who are working across the country. So it's good to be with all of you today. And to answer your question, Lee, um, you know, my background first and foremost is I, I'm a parent of two campers um, who are now teenagers. have been going to camp for many years and they live and breathe camp. And last summer was very tough for them like so many others, um, but they're, they're my, my pride and joy. And um, beyond that, I'm a, I'm, I'm a camp lifer like um, Andy mentioned. And I started out as a camper when I was nine years old. And when I was 15, um, when I went on our teen travel trips was really one of my pivotal life points and that thrust me into um, becoming a camp staff for seven years, which then inspired me to want to find a field where I could work with serving children and families and that's directly out of camp and um, I, we often say amongst my friend group that we're all searching for camp in some way, shape or form in our lives even beyond that. And thus I became a child psychologist and had the fortune to reconnect with Tamarack many years ago and serve as a lay leader for, for many years now. So it's, I get to wear all those hats today and I'm just excited to be with this group and share and share ideas with one another. Danny, I remember when your children started camp. I remember when Abby started, maybe you remember this story. And you said, hey Lee, and Abby was very young. And you said, I just told Abby that I'm going to stay inside the duffel bag once we zip it up. And uh, that way I could live for uh, 10 days at camp this summer. Will you let her know that's okay? And I might show up in the duffel bag. I remember the conversation we told Abby, this is not okay. And we're gonna have to separate uh, your dad from his passion and he'll live it through you. Uh, I, I remember this story as you share. And so I would ask you to share a little bit more what drives you today, your passion, so passionate about camp and you sit on our board. Um, what drives you today as, uh, as you shared as a parent, but really as a lay leader, what drives you to continue to be a voice in today's camping world? Um, well, I see you know, both of my own experiences and what I see professionally, what I see in our community is the impact that camp has on kids and building self-esteem and building confidence and allowing them to try new things out uh, from a Jewish standpoint, getting that Jewish experience. So for me, what drives me is a chance to try to share those experiences in a, way, a little way that I can with other people. And what I would add today, and we'll talk a lot over the next hour, is how this is probably more important than ever as we're now coming out of a pandemic and looking at things like resiliency and reintegration and the anxiety that so many are feeling right now um, in our professional lives and our personal lives and re-entering in a world that for the last 14 months has sent us messages that this world is not so safe right now, that we have to kind of be on high alert. And now we're getting messages, hey, it might be okay to come out a little bit. And for many, camp is going to be that next step. So it stems from a life experiences of camp. Um, but I'm super excited to see camps opening and taking the steps they need to because you guys on this call, you're the answer, you're the healing, and we'll talk a lot about that today and helping us um, you know, get through the other side of this pandemic and certainly all the mental health challenges that we've seen over this past year as a result of the pandemic. Danny, on a global front, tell us how this year has affected your families. Um, this, is, this has been a tough year, and I imagine everyone on this, this call could probably talk about the experiences of anxiety, the unknown of what we were going to be going through over the next year. Um, most everyone has experienced loss. 
um, in some way, shape, or form. We've seen things, not only the loss of camp, which was one of the first things to go for many, um, but the loss of bar and bat mitzvahs and weddings, the losses of our typical rituals of being able to grieve when we've lost people, whether it's to COVID or otherwise, for our teenagers, the loss of proms and graduations and grad parties, the loss of a college year where they've been home um, on a virtual learning situation for general kids not being able to be with their friends, being separated. So there's been tremendous kind of loss. Uh, Maggie, for those of you who saw her presentation, talked about the collective trauma and the secondary trauma that we're all experiencing. It's been a really tough year for, for all of us together. And um, we're, we're still you know, working our way through that and working our way out of that. And, um, and the mental health issues have been is like things we've never seen before. And it was already pretty challenging prior to COVID. You and I talked about, Danny, that there's opportunity for a shift, that that's what was, it continues in a different way, but was so um, thematic of the previous months that you've outlined the pain, the suffering, the challenges, the loss. And now it's uh, approaching May. And we're at an opportunity for a shift. And I know you've spoken about optimism. Uh, I want to shift focus for a moment. We're going to watch a video uh, br very briefly. And then I'm going to ask you on the other side, why is it relevant? Janine, with that, uh, I would ask us to pause together. Let's watch what's on the screen. And Danny, you'll follow. Uh, why is this opportunity from what we see on the screen? And how can we embrace the relevancy? I'm the greatest hitter in the world! Strike one. I'm the greatest hitter in the world! Strike two. Strike three. Wow. I'm the greatest pitcher in the world. Yes. Optimism. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. So cool. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Well, you, what, I, what I see, first of all, is I see a kid in the outdoors, which makes me think, think about camp and you see the trees and just the excitement of somebody being outside in the summer. Um, but beyond that, the message this conveys is to be able to look at things differently and look at things with a sense of optimism. And as we come from a world, um, as I mentioned before, where we've been stuck in anxiety and fear, um, we can kind of shift and look at now opportunities that lie ahead of us um, as a camp community, as an overall community. And um, this kid really, um, it, it really typifies, you know, that hope and that optimism. Thanks for sharing and for the reaction. Uh, let's narrow down. Uh, what can we be thinking about? What should the group on this call then, through, it, through your lens, what should we be thinking about as these kids now pivot from home back to camp. Sure, so th there's clearly a lot to think about and I have no doubt there's a lot in everybody's mind right now as you plan for a camp summer and a bubble and coming out of the context. And um, you know, I kind of alluded to it before from a mental health perspective and many may be aware of this, it's been a tough year for, for so many kids. And I know camps for years have been seeing an increase in mental health issues in a camp setting. And this year is no different, and there's a whole other layer to that. So, you know, this past year we've seen an increase in, um, in in calls for services, you know, for therapists, and it's been hard for people to get in. And there's been kind of a surge of that going on. So now to shift into where we are now, we have to certainly be more aware than ever. Um, I know sometimes it can be a challenge in camps to make sure we're getting the information from our staff and from our parents and what we need to know going into the camp summer, but really making sure you're getting good information from them about what their campers might be coming into with the summer. Now that's not all campers. And one of the things I wanna think about as well as we have their own experiences, but every family, every camper, every staff has had their own experiences this past year. And we have some that have been highly anxious 
And we have some that are on the other end of the spectrum that have minimized COVID. We have staff that are coming from colleges where they may have had COVID or maybe not had COVID, but living without masks in a very carefree world. And now they're coming into a bubble. So I think we need to be mindful of different places that our, um, our camp community is gonna be coming into when they integrate into our, our camp session. And one other thing I'll, I'll, I wanna emphasize is preparedness. And it's something that everyone is doing right now in this call is getting ready for the summer. And we all like to know, we like to predict what's gonna be up ahead of us. I wanted to know that my internet connection was stable today, but that didn't happen. And I was able to be flexible and pivot. But in general, we wanna know, we wanna know what, what was gonna be ahead of us. We wanna know who their counselors are gonna be, who are gonna be, their, their bunks are gonna be with them. Staff wanna know what villages are gonna be, um, what those are gonna be like for them in terms of assignments. But there's another layer to that right now. And that is that um, we're, we're going, we're, camp's gonna look differently. And I think it's important as we prepare for the summer that we're communicating with our camp families and our camp staff in particular about what is the same and what is different, that we're listening and getting some feedback on the ground right now. And that can help us transition into pre-camp and staff training and thinking about kind of sessions that might be important and they may be different sessions that we've had in the past to help us transition from where we were to where we are and then prepare us for those next seven or eight weeks of camp so it could be a successful summer. So there's a lot, lot to think about. Danny, when the phone rings tonight at, uh, for someone on this call, and it's a camper on the other end of the line saying, hey, camp director, hey, camp professional, I'm nervous. I think I don't wanna go. What, what can we tell this camper? So it's a great question. I think it's one probably you've been fielding for years, even prior to that. And I think the approaches are very similar to what we've done before. I would start with acknowledging that and normalizing that. that yeah, it's very, um, it's normal for kids to feel nervous going into camp, um, whether it's a new camper, it's a new um, experience for them altogether, or whether it's a camper that's been before, but camp may feel different. They're kind of hearing things about kind of a bubble. They're hearing things about cohorts and they may not be able to see their brother or sister in the same way or their friend who might be in a different village. So there's just another layer to that that I think people should be aware of. But I think in terms of coaching, it's really the same things that we do. We kind of normalize that. We get them talking about what makes, what they're excited for for the summer. We acknowledge things that we can answer and there may be things that we can't answer, but recognize that there's counselors and staff that are gonna be there to kind of help you and support you kind of along the way. Now let's say that camper hears you and agrees. She'll be on the bus and uh, camper gets off the bus and struggles. What can we teach our staff during staff training? What are some of the sessions to prepare for arrival and concerns in the middle of the field? Sure, so again, you know, I'd emphasize what I said before is that we all wanna have some sense of predictability. And I love this. So, yeah. Uh, I need somebody to mute on there. <laughs> no, I'll just add, I think that was Tony and Tony, I'm thrilled for your comment. Um, <laughs> I love listening to Danny Klein. And if you love this, then you're like me listening to Danny with respect. If everybody could, however, uh, remain on mute, that would be helpful. And Danny, continue along. So staff training, how do we coach our staff? What sessions could be relevant as you began sharing? Right, so I, I, I think what you initially asked was about with campers, I'm gonna answer in a few ways. So I think with mm -hmm. campers and with staff, because oftentimes pre-camp is kind of a model and a structure similar to what a camp session is gonna look like. And so letting them know kind of what's up ahead, what's, you know, what things are gonna look like, what, you know, the orientations, what activities are gonna look like, what the bubble is gonna look like in the short term. And we may not have all the answers. Things are changing on the ground. People are getting vaccinated. There may be opportunities down the line where things may change, but we're, camps are kind of going with what the facts are at the moment. And so I think we gotta speak from that standpoint. And, and the other thing besides speaking is listening. And I think when I think about a pre-camp training, I want to be able to have a session. I would recommend having a session to kind of listen and process what this last year or two has been like. For, for, for our staff, they've been through a lot. Um, you know, we can go through, we talked about some of the losses. Some of the losses might have been the loss of some of their friends that they thought have one more summer with and are not back with them or the loss of the dream of what that program they were gonna get that summer and that may have changed. So I think a chance to listen to that aspect of it. And then I wanna kind of think ahead a little bit. And I wanna think ahead about what it's like, what they anticipate things could be like in the bubble and acknowledge that there's an opportunity that we wanna embrace, that um, this is a really exciting summer 
for our camp, for the camps that were either shut down last summer or had to um, provide certain, provide camp in a different way. This is a chance to kind of restart. I was actually Googling um, synonyms for rebirth and the first one that came up was resurrection, which I thought was not a good term to use in a Jewish camp. Um, but, um, but I think you know, to think about it in that positive way that this is a rebirth, this is a reawakening of camp and to get our staff to embrace this very special opportunity that they have. And as I said before about camp, being part of the healing for our community, they're gonna be a part to help our campers and staff heal. So you kind of set that frame. And then I think we have to acknowledge that there's gonna be challenges this summer that for many camps, their staff are accustomed to getting days off and that's gonna be different. And so we need to think about how we can support them. We need to think about how we're gonna help them cope in situations of listening to what do you do when you get stressed? What has kind of helped you get through this year? What are things that we can think about? And, um, and camp and try to integrate those in as we plan the rest of the summer. Thanks, Danny. And in a moment, I'm going to yield, not yet, but shortly to Andy. I know questions have come her way uh, and that she's fielding them. So if you have questions, please continue to reach Andy. Not yet, as I want to ask a follow-up, uh, Danny, to what you said. Th this session is back to camp, into the bubble. This is different for everybody on the screen. We've never really lived um, quote unquote, in the bubble in camp. Uh, happy staff equals happy campers. Help us through this. How do we keep our staff happy in the bubble? They're so used to an escape, even if it's for a couple of hours a night. I know at Tamarack camps and so many others, those escapes have changed and we're living with them internally. Talk us through this, keeping our staff engaged, healthy and happy. Sure. And, um, and one of the things that comes to mind immediately is camp people are some of the most creative people that there are. I think currently in my life, that's always been my experience. So I know that so many of you are thinking creatively in this way. So I think you know, more globally, we need to think about how we can make depression different more than ever. We know that as you, summers go on for staff, sometimes they get burnt out. The stress, the anxiety starts creeping up for them as to what it's gonna be like when they go back to school or jobs or life in the fall. So we want to you know, be mindful of, of that and talk with them about, um, you know, again, how we can keep things, change things up. I think about when I was at camp and sometimes we would switch specialists for counselors to give them kind of a different view on a different day, being creative about what we can do for a day off. You shared with me some ideas that Tamarack was talking about, about having a spa day or a salon day or going to a different part of camp. We might need to think about for some staff, they might need a very different job second session than first session. Um, and so there might be some decisions that might've been different in a previous year. We want that continuity and for the sake of that, keep things fresh and different. We might wanna think about that you know, move, moving ahead as well. But I think that's gonna be really critical that we kind of think about that. The other thing that comes to mind that I would, would advise camps to think about is having different vehicles of communication from day one. So historically in a camp setting, you're gonna have your unit meetings or you might have an all camp meeting. Um, so one thing that I think about is having some different drop-in times that become integrated into the camp summer. So it could be with a unit head or a senior staff or even a social worker. It could be a mental health person or not, but just times for people to kind of come together and connect. And that may look differently as the summer progresses with the bubble. But I think integrating that in a positive kind of mental wellness way and not just let's go, you can talk to a social worker when you're having a hard time. And I think if you set that expectation early on, how important it is that we engage with these opportunities and how useful we think that our staff will find that, we can kind of build that into your culture and not so much a solving a problem model, but really caretaking model throughout the summer. So I really think about different ways you can have that communication going um, even beyond what camps already do. Danny, before we go to Andy, I'm gonna open it up to the group. Uh, anyone here that could share, how are you making your staff happy? Uh, what kinds of ideas have you come up with in the bubble that could benefit the field on this call? Any ideas of what Danny just shared? Um, ways to keep staff happy? I'll yield for just a moment. Any other ideas? And if you, you can unmute yourself and just chime in if you if you if you want to answer the question. I'm going to yield Andy to you, and then we'll go back to the field. Know that this will be a part of it. And the next time that we say who has a thought, 
I'll really encourage and probably hold longer because I'm looking at so many leaders on this call and we could learn from your leadership. So I'm not going to do it in this mm -hmm. moment, but in the next moment, be prepared that A, I'll wait longer and B, I then may just call a name. Uh, with that, <laughs> Andy, I'll call yours uh, and say, I know questions have come your way. And so we could start with that. Andy, any questions, yes. we'll just pause, Danny, for a moment, and Andy will turn to you. Yes, absolutely. And be ready. Dr. Trepik is going to do a, a pop quiz. So, you know, I, I'm seeing a theme in the questions, and it plays off exactly uh, to the topic that we were just on. Um, one of the questions that was coming in was this concern about taking care of my staff, and I'm worried about my staff. And we sort of started with that, and I hope we can all share ideas. But I'm going to give you a combination of things that I saw. Uh, uh, how, do people, how do directors avoid the temptation to play therapist with their staff? Some people have camper care people that are dedicated to that. But I think maybe some folks are thinking, yeah, but shouldn't I be doing more because it's such an unusual time? Um, and, how, you know, and Danny actually said the word check-in time. Um, and that was the question, should I have a regular check-in time to see how people are doing? Is it daily? Is it weekly? What's overdoing it and what's underdoing it? So that's the general topic. That's a great question. So I don't think anyone needs to play therapist. I think what I was just kind of speaking to is just keeping those vehicles of communication open and they may happen in a number of ways. And I think there's a, there certainly can be the temptation to overdo it. So I think early on in pre-camp, I think if one of the themes you emphasize is about how important communication is going to be this summer for so many different reasons and to speak up and we don't know what to anticipate. You know, we can, I can come with a message of doom and gloom that we have so many mental health issues and anxiety and the loss and all that. And you know, what I think is important to contextualize what we're coming into. But we're going into an environment that is the happiest, we call it camp, you know, the happiest, greatest place on, on earth. And it's a very happy environment. And there's inherent challenges in any normal camp summer, let alone one in this summer. So I think that if we, if we kind of put, integrate those into our, you know, our staff meetings, we'll just kind of check in how things are going. And again, set the frame that it can be positive, share successes, share things that are going well, share things about how you're coping and integrating into camp, sometimes it can be just giving a couple questions to a unit head to ask them to facilitate a little of that conversation. And also for our for senior staff for leaders at camp to acknowledge that, hey, we expect there could be tough moments at the camp. And if you need extra support, that's why we have these you know, you know, check-in meetings, these connection meetings throughout the um, throughout the um, the summer and you take advantage of those. We have people there to support you. And um, the part I'll comment on as well is, the question may be, you know, that are asked is when is it kind of a more check-in issue and when is it more become a bigger mental health concern? And it's something that camps I hear about when I work with camps over the summer and they, they call in. And so we often look at changes in functioning and recognizing that in a camp session, a day can feel like a year. So it's very different than when a parent calls me at home and, you know, so there's a higher intensity in the camp setting. So we need to recognize that. And sometimes it could be harder to delineate whether this is a real dramatic, serious change in functioning or whether it's just somebody having a, a bad day. And that's where you would lean on your camp social worker or your consultants to kind of help you determine is this person having some ongoing changes in their functioning, their, you know, you know not I'm going to sleep well at camp, but they're not sleeping as well. They seem more irritable with their colleagues with other campers or the campers are pulling out of activities or you're seeing more homesickness. And so I think if there's a question about that, it's always good to talk with somebody and run that by them. Um, but the camps are going to have ebbs and flows. And something else that came to my mind this morning, which has been one of the opportunities that have come in my field, um, as many are aware of, we've been providing most of our services via this platform, via telehealth. I've um, seen two patients in person in 14 months and we're starting to reintegrate back into the office now. And when I was told, you know, 14 months ago, this is how we're going to deliver services, I said, no way am I going to be able to effectively work with a child over a telehealth platform and my whole practice is going to fold. I know how we're going to support people. And we pivoted quickly and learned how we can effectively do this. And I'm bringing this up because in my own experience as a community therapist, it's not unusual for me to feel a call from a camp social worker or from a camp director and consult. And I think there's more opportunity now when appropriate, if a therapist needed to be engaged with a camper while we don't want to go into technology and screens, this might be a very appropriate way to leverage that technology with a staff member who needs to 
check in with their therapist or with a camper and help them get through whatever they're going through at camp and make it through the summer. So there's, I think, opportunities that we've learned that we could utilize in these situations. And um, I think the key is just, is, you know, it's, it's, it's the theme here, but it's really, it's communication. And I, I think things are going to be okay. I think, yeah, I said to Lee the other day, that if I were to walk through camp, which I'm not gonna be able to this summer, fortunately, I think what I'm gonna see are kids singing and playing and doing arts and crafts projects. And it's gonna look very much the same. They might be wearing masks at times, depending on what's going on at camp. But for the most part, camp is gonna look like camp. The stressors that counselors go through are gonna be similar with another layer to be aware of, but they're gonna be similar. And for camp directors and camp professionals, you've been doing this for years, you have the tools. It's not so much that we have to think of that many more tools. I think we need to be more creative and being able to mix things up more and being able to give some variety like I was saying. But the tools you have is just creating that other layer of awareness and being more intentional and in kind of the things we've already done that work. And I have no doubt that camps are gonna be very successful. And as I said before, and for me, it just goes through my head, part of that healing and resiliency that everyone is desperately craving. So, so there's a question that I so relate to because I, I keep thinking about oh, if I were a camp director this summer, I think, I mean, all of these things feel so relevant, but this is a, a specific follow-up question. Um, if a staff member wants to lead, oh, if a staff member, we've all been in the position where sometimes a staff member is thinking about, you know, maybe they can't make it through the end of the summer for things unrelated to something like COVID. You know, they've had a loss in their family or something else is going on and, you know, and all you folks have sat down and had those conversations. And I think what the person is getting at is how do I gauge, you know, how, how do I know what, you know, how far to, you know, you offer the support, you offer the, I think that maybe there's a concern that I might be wanting them to stay when really it's a mistake and they're so stressed out and the COVID thing is getting to them or the bubble thing is getting to them that really I, I, I shouldn't try so hard because I feel like maybe I can't give them what they need this summer, even though maybe I could offer it in a different summer. I hope that I interpreted that properly Yeah, I, to I the person who wrote it. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, that perspective. And I would look at it in a few different ways that one, if a decision was made to keep that staff on a little bit longer or they agreed to do that and it didn't work out, they, you would know that probably in short order if we, we tried, it just isn't working. In terms of figuring that piece out, that's, you know, that's a tough judgment call and each situation is unique and different and kind of figuring things out. So I'd be you know, talking, first of all, I'd be listening to what they might be feeling challenged by and seeing what they feel they might need or ideas that we could put forth to kind of help them cope or help them deal with what they're struggling with. If it's something internal to camp and some of the dynamics they're feeling, there may be ways we could support them and help them be successful. If it's things that feel like that, that are outside of camp and that they're stressing and are really occupying their, their time, um, seeing if there's a way to help them cope effectively with that. And in some cases, it's just too much for them to overcome because there is in a, you know, while I'm saying camps that look the same, there is that other layer to it. And there's a lot more unknown and a lot more that people have gone through. And it's hard to really tell how that's impacted each and every one of us because we all have had our own experiences um, in their staff had their own experiences. So there's, there's a lot to kind of unpack there. Um, but I think the approaches aren't that much different than what you would use in making that determination and helping to see if we can help that staff, you know, get through the summer and be successful. So that Danny, temptation also to, to, to overthink, you're telling, you're telling us don't overthink, go with your gut and go with what your experience already tells you. Right. I think there's that awareness, yeah. but I think, yeah, yeah, you're, you're right on that. I think it's easy again to think about this context and overthink things. Um, people are people and we, we've been through a lot. And, and I think we've, one of the things that's gonna come out, I believe once we kind of get through pandemic is that people are gonna learn to cope better. We've had to cope through so much, the things I laid out. And I think in the long run, there's so many different silver linings that will come from this. Not that we would have wished this on anybody, um, but there's many. And I think one is that, um, that kids have learned to adapt and cope. they've learned to go to school with masks. We've learned how to cope in a world that feels threatening to us. You know, think about what that felt like last year when we were washing off our, putting our mail for, for several days and didn't want to touch carry out and had to learn how to cope with that fear. From an anxiety lens, the best way that we help people with anxiety is we teach them how to face into it, face the fears. Anxiety is our brain kind of putting on the warning lights that, hey, we need to be careful here. And sometimes it can disproportionately deter, you know, 
how fearful or how threatening that situation is. And if we learn that, hey, I can handle this, I can handle something really scary, I can handle sending my child off in a couple months to camp, knowing that there's a pandemic going around, that's going to help me trust the world better. And for mm -hmm. kids to be able to get on that bus and go to camp for the first time in two years, or that camper that didn't have the opportunity to sleep over this year would have prepared them for overnight camp, but they've gone and done that successfully. These are all things that are going to teach positive coping and, and help our, our youth and help all of us moving forward. Thanks. Danny, uh, thank you, Andy, for those, and we'll come back to you as uh, the session continues. Danny, I just want to narrow on one part that it has come my way. Staff training and looking at the group on the screen, so many of whom are writing the story now for staff training. Uh, give us a session of many that you've spoken about that would be a good takeaway for this group as they write a specific topic for staff training. You've covered many. Uh, what would be something that you would say, hey group, this would be a really important specific topic to cover with your staff? Yeah, but a couple that come to mind immediately. One I kind of alluded to already, I would call it something like the road back to camp and having staff sit with kind of cohorts together and talk about what the last really two, you know, year, year and a half has been like, or two years since they've been to camp, whether they were previous camp staff or whether they're new to camp. I think that could create a lot of kind of connection and you know, share the, those things that kind of bond them together. Um, I think it'd be really important to talk about something around kind of mental wellness and coping. I think this is really critical. Um, you know, we, we are all acknowledging that camp in a bubble is gonna be different for, for every camp, some in similar ways, some in different ways. And so to get their input, they've again been through a lot this past year. What has kind of helped them cope? What has helped them adapt over this year? What kind of things they foresee will be helpful for them in week four and week six if they start recognizing um, and talking about what kind of signs they might be able to recognize in themselves if they're getting stressed out. So I think talking about the things and getting them to acknowledge those individually and collectively, I think will be helpful for them to kind of set themselves out and then as well, staff to kind of listen to them to think about what kind of in-services or what kind of trainings or what kind of staff socials or what kind of things do I need to do, things that we can anticipate, but the staff's gonna be a whole wealth of knowledge and experience to share with you to kind of help you um, get through a, a successful summer. Thanks, Danny. Really good advice. And I remember these years working hard during staff training topics uh, and trying to engage. It's a different time and your voice resonates for that. I'm going to pause again, uh, looking through so many leaders on this screen. Uh, I have more questions, but let's hear from you. Uh, I'm going to look around my screen and see if anyone has anything to add. Hi, Lee. Um, I, so we've been talking a lot here at EKC about kind of adjustment um, issues and adjustment disorders and that, you know, a lot of people who really didn't have any of that before have been living life in a completely different way. And so that's going to present itself um, differently this summer. And um, I'm just wondering what, what we should be on the lookout for when it comes to having issues adjusting both for campers and for staff. They've been living really different lives and, and we wanna be prepared to help them make adjustments. A lot of them haven't been around people or you know, haven't been living with other people. Um, and so I'm curious what we can do to help there. Sure, it's, it's gonna be a, um, an interesting experience. I'll share just this past Sunday night. I had the first gathering of my staff in person since last year. There was 18 of us, we are all fully vaccinated. And there was kind of this awkwardness when we all arrived together. We were so happy to be in person together and we didn't know whether we should hug each other, whether we should stay distance, masks, no masks. And CDC, since then has said no masks, we ended up doing no masks at that. So there was kind of just even for those couple hours at a park for us, there was like this feeling out process. And I think that there might be a little bit of that the first day. I think it's gonna, I think people are gonna adjust pretty quickly. And I think as camp leaders, I think it's important, as I was saying before, to help people know what to expect. And even some of those social conventions of what, what is okay and whether there's gonna be, if there's masks, which I imagine there will be for the beginning of camp until you get tests back. And so even talking about that first day and that, you know, what a hug might be or a, you know, a high five from a distance. So I think on a very basic level, I think we need to start there and then kind of build out. I think communicating with, with staff and campers what the first couple of days are gonna look like or the first week in a email communication or a, even better a video, you could kind of share with them and maybe having a fun video of like 
what's the same and what's going to feel different and showing staff or showing counselors and, and masks and having fun together. I think those things can kind of help ease that transition because it becomes more concrete to see what that looks like. And I think that will help put people at ease. And then as camp you know, continues on, I think the other adjustment challenges you might see are not gonna look much different than what you're accustomed to camp. You're gonna see kids that maybe are honeymooning for a few hours and then some of their challenges start coming out and the homesickness that starts emerging on the first Shabbat or um, you know, a few more days into things. And so looking for those campers that are more withdrawn or looking for campers that might be acting out in ways that are unexpected or maybe sometimes they're expected if we kind of know kind of who they are. And kind of verbalize to them, you know, the same thing, reaffirming our expectations for camp and what's kind of coming up. And so I think, again, I'll go back to I think a lot of those things aren't going to look that much different. Are there going to be more of them this year? It's possible. Is there not going to be more of them? I don't think any of us can predict. But I think as long as we kind of know what we're getting into and kind of doubling up on some of the things that we know that work that I've spoken about, I think you guys are going to be doing just fine in, um, in the summer. Jordan, thanks for raising. Danny, thanks for um, that really important answer. I'll pause again, looking around the screen. Any questions from the group? For an expert who does this as a living day to day, any questions from the group? Andy, others I know. Hey, I mean, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Justin. Um, I'm with Tamarack Camps and um, I just want to like bring this to people's minds. Like we're talking about um, like how we can talk about entering into a bubble at camp, but we should have in the, like on our back burner, how we're going to talk to campers and staff about reintegrating them into three months from now, we're probably still, still going to be living in a pandemic. So the entry talk into camp is like super important. And I don't have anything like really set in stone right now, but I've been thinking about it about, how can we talk about the re-entry back into the world from a bubble, which will be weird. So. That's, a, that's an excellent point and something that, to think about. And I wasn't even thinking in that way, but I, th I think that's something we should be mindful of. And I, I remember in my own camp experience, you know, working as a staff and that, you know, it was labeled for me separation anxiety. And you see those last several days where everybody is kind of at each other's throats and kind of irritable and angry and, um, you know, staff are quitting three days before the end of the summer. And it really was reflective of the anxiety of, you know, saying goodbye and the anxiety re-entering back into um, in, into the non-camp world. And there's, you know, again, going, as you said, Justin, we don't know what things are going to look like come come August. And, um, you know, things can shift. And we've learned this, this if we learned anything in this pandemic is that no one can predict what's going to happen. We can keep hearing messages. We're going to be out of this by a certain time. And then it changes and shifts. So I think, you know, the way I would answer that is I think it'd be a real service to your, to particularly your staff to kind of talk about that specifically as you start winding down, um, you know, the summertime and, you know, giving them a, a form just to kind of talk about their feelings about camp ending, feelings about, um, about going back to college or going, you know, moving away or whatever they might be doing there. I think that would be a real service, not only to the finishing off camp in a very positive note, but also afterwards and what, you know, going back to, you know, many, many years ago and I, my camp social worker resonates with me to, to this day, who was one of my, my mentors and talking about how important it was that we verbalize this when all that acting out was going on, that putting words to it, that this is kind of normal and expected. And um, it was amazing for me because I learned that at camp and then I watched it play out at the end of a college year where everybody was fighting and arguing and couldn't wait to be, be done with the summer because it was just easier to be angry at somebody and say goodbye than to leave on a good note and the anxiety of what was going to come next. So, you know, my answer to that is I think I'm glad you put that out there because I think we really need to have that on our minds as well. And um, it, it's, it's a stressful time for, for all of us. Yeah, Justin, thank you for that question. Jordan, thank you for yours. I'll, I'll follow it up with an extension to this group. Danny, we started a, a, a program during this quote unquote off season with our uh, internal staff. We called it the superpower program. Take care of yourself. Uh, take some time in the midst of these days to ensure that you're healthy and that you're well. Advise this group, what, what could we do to make sure that we as the leaders of our camps stay healthy and that we're taking the appropriate care of our own selves while we're working to help others. 
what, what, a, what a great what a great question, Lee. And um, I think I'm glad that's coming up as well because um, I, I appreciate it. I think that the stress and the pressure and excitement and everything that's probably swirling through the head of the camp professionals on this call. And um, in any camp summer, we can't predict what's going to happen. There's always things that you know you think you've seen it all, and then something else kind of happens. And again, we have a changing outside world around us. So I think practicing self-care, you know, a camp director's job is a 24 seven job and you get those wake up calls in the middle of the night. And I think it's gonna be really critical with you living in that bubble and not getting that separation to make sure you carve out time that you are, you treat it as if it's your day off and you, you delegate to your assistant director or to somebody else and short of, you know, the camp burning down to the ground, God forbid, <laughs> that, um, that you should be left kind of alone or given time to, to you know, practice self-care, go for a run, go for swimming at, at another side of the camp. Um, and then I would also strongly recommend is using one another. I think it's so wonderful that JCCA and organizations like, um, you know, J Camp 180 have created these cohorts and these support systems that I know the camp professionals have with each other. And I think it would be beneficial if there's a Zoom call like this once or twice over the summer with a subset of the professionals here or a group that you feel close with to make sure that that's happening and kind of talk each other through what you're seeing and experiencing, um, not only to learn from each other, but to support each other. Because um, it can be lonely up on top, you know, especially in the roles that you have. You don't have such a cohort in, in camp and you have to, like a parent, you have to put on a, um, a happy face and smile and it mode reassurance to your, your camp staff and your campers. And um, just like I do with my own kids, when the inside you're not feeling so sure and you're feeling anxious and you may not have all the answers inside, but we have to wear a hat on one side. But at the end of the day, we're all humans too. And we're all people too. And we're all people that are experiencing this. And even though camp directors are superheroes in my eyes, um, we're, we're truly our human underneath those, those outfits and we need to make sure that we recognize that in ourselves and what we've been through this past year, um, as well as the day-to-day the -day challenges of, of being a camp director or running a camp. It really helps. And uh, Danny, I'm going to share something came my way a number of years ago and it really helped uh, me. We, we had an Esther who's on this call uh, was a part of this group that we had the uh, pleasure, Esther, of participating in called Ellie. Uh, and and th the name could be any name. The purpose of it was to form a group, a bond, uh, someone that you felt comfortable in a safe space with. And the spirit was hold someone accountable to what, to what they say will be helpful to them in their own self-care. And through the summer, we held each other accountable. So I would get texts from the person who was holding me accountable. And, and they said, hey, Lee, you talked about you like to run, which I do. I called Danny yesterday during a run. Uh, and we had a great conversation, Danny. I appreciate it. And it was a form of quote unquote therapy. Uh, hold each other accountable. Maybe find out what someone, it could even be someone from another camp, someone from your own cohort would say, hey, I know this helps you to keep a clear mind. Ask that person to hold you accountable and do the same for someone else. And it's a way that it, it, it caused you to remember, Esther, remember this in a safe space where you could really say, oh, I remember. That was important to me for my own care. Esther, I see you just unmuted. But when yeah, I saw I, you, I was, it really I was resonated. Shaking my head. Absolutely. We created that space and it made such a difference. And I owe Tony, who's still on this call, an apology because I forgot to tell her. There was one check-in with her that I was supposed to tell her. To, we were both supposed to get our nails done and we didn't. But um, absolutely creating that space and holding each other accountable. And in a way, when we looked at making, at holding others accountable, it made us look, for me at least, it made me look at myself as well. Because it wasn't enough for me to say to somebody else, what about you? It made me look in, um, it made me look into myself and see that. It's beautiful to hear, and I'm going to take the liberty, Tony, of reading your chat. It, it said, yes, Esther, it helped me a lot. Tony was part of this cohort, uh, and I'm really thrilled that we could benefit by the strength of each other. That's this conversation. That's today. Danny is a vehicle to the strength, and then we own a certain amount of our own muscle. Someone tell us something else, um, a way that you imagine taking care of your own selves uh, or a strategy that you've employed so that we can continue to learn from each other. Uh, I'll hold off on calling on this person, uh, but I'll ask if so on, on any person, but I'll ask if someone could share. Tell us a story of power, uh, a story that you, uh, that you think will help you and maybe in turn can help someone else. I'm gonna scroll through my screen 
and wait for someone to unmute with this answer. How can you help someone on this call? Tell us a story of strength. Tell us a way you plan to take care of your own self. I plan to take lots of walks and listen to music um, and get some of my coworkers to do it too so that we can get step away from the camp for a little bit and, and you know take a walk away from all the action. Lisa, I had the honor of being at your camp. Uh, Sabra is a powerhouse uh, of music also. Uh, and what a nice idea, create energy, maybe music, listening to it on your own self or playing it through camp, recognizing if it helps you, maybe it helps someone else. We saw the way your camp moved. In stride, music was a vehicle for that. That's exactly what we're talking about and sort of what Danny has shared with me privately. Find that vehicle uh, that, that motivates you. Lisa, I'm really glad you shared. And I think it's helpful. Take a walk, take a run, read a book. Uh, find, find that peace in your own soul that motivates uh, you. Someone tell us something else. Jackie, I see your hand. So, you know, back when I was in my office, but in my office, I have pictures, um, you know, from various years at camp when I was a camper and something that's always helped me when, you know, I'm stressed about a camper situation or, you know, a report with a deadline, you know, oftentimes we get so zoned in on the Excel documents that we're working on and all of that. And I like to take a step back and look at my camp pictures and remind myself, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, if, if something is stressing me out in the moment, um, you know, to really look at those pictures and it brings me back to when I was a camper and someone, you know, was doing this job in this role for me. And it really, you know, built the person that I am today. And I'm very grateful for the camp directors when I was a camper. And, you know, I'm happy to be able to be doing that for campers now. And, um, you know, looking at old camp pictures helps to put me back into that place. Danny, that's exactly what you were talking about with the opportunity, the rebirth. Jackie, I'm glad, I'm glad you shared. Uh, Michelle Lafferty, I know there's something that had come to you. Would love to hear your voice. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm somewhere I can't put the camera on because I have, there's kids here that can't get on um, video, but um, I've been doing some uh, laughing yoga um, to laugh a lot, been doing it with some preschool teachers and um, kids, and I hope to bring that to camp because it's just been great, um, and just to laugh, just to hang out uh, sometimes uh, when they have that moment to get away and to laugh with them. Beautifully said, uh, laughter is such a course. Danny, any follow-up on any of those good stories that you've just heard? I think those are all tremendous. And something else that came to mind I wanted to mention is this past year, as I, as I alluded to, we've been living in a, in a world of high stress where the world, as I said before, has kind of been a, a threat to us. Our, our arousal systems, um, you know, our cortisol, some of our neurotransmitters, neuropreferin, those have been going in overdrive for a long time as we've been navigating this. And so where camps can be a place to come down from that, but also camp has a fast pace. So I think it's really important that um, the, the things that we're talking about or whether, you know, it's putting in some mindfulness or putting in the, you know, the yoga or going for the walks is camp directors all the way down to our campers. Those are things that we can do to kind of help our whole camp community out that's not necessarily speaking or communicating about directly about what's going on, but really helping our systems to calm down in a way in a much slower pace that we need. You know, should I think about Jewish camp settings that Shabbat kind of brings everything down and I think it's such an amazing um, experience at camp, those, those 24 hours of, of Shabbat through Havdalah to calm that down. And at a bigger level camp, if we kind of think about that and intentionally integrate more of that into camp this year than ever, I think it's gonna help, you know, our, again, in that our bodies really heal from this high stress we've been living under. Thanks for sharing. Any other uh, comments? Uh, I certainly have another piece for Danny to share, but I'll hold it for a moment as I just scroll across my screen. Anybody, anything else um, that, could, uh, that could be helpful? I see in the chat, uh, Lisa, perhaps I could uh, ask if you could share that directly. Okay, so last year we had family getaways and it was very different, but we had, you know, family groups come and we were able to keep everybody 
in their own family bubble. So, but the staff was pretty stressed out. So we started doing this compliment jar um, where people <laughs> throw in compliments and we would read them um, once a week at like our staff gathering or staff meeting and the staff just loved it. Like everybody was clapping for each other and snapping and it became just, people couldn't wait to hear. And what was fun about it is that everybody would go through and compliment each other on different things, like something they saw somebody do or, and we, we started to even the families put in compliments. So I think that just brought a lot of joy and made people feel really good. So. What a beautiful way to uh, add uh, to add, Lisa. These voices they make such a difference, uh, and and so important. Uh, and I did have the pleasure of seeing um, of seeing another comment, Jen. I could ask if you're uh, comfortable sharing directly, and if not, I'll take your words and share it uh, through you. Oh no. I'm I'm comfortable sharing directly. Great, Jen would love to hear. Uh, this is really um, a, a nice comment that you've added. So yeah, so I was talking to one of my colleagues because we have a, a little mesh committee, right? Um, because we're working with the Yadid Nefesh grant. And we were talking about, I work at a sports camp and we were talking about how intense emotions can become at times. Um, when we're overwhelmed, when we're exhausted, um, when our competitiveness comes out. And because the community is so small, those conflicts that occur between us and our peers or between campers can really impact the experience that we have. Um, if there isn't a place or a time to resolve to talk about. So we were talking about walking with intention, right? Recognizing that there's a conflict and yeah, um, inviting that person to walk with us or encouraging those that are in conflict to walk and kind of resolve the conflict through the effort of walking and talking about it. So starting in conflict and arriving at resolution and feeling heard and validated instead of sitting face to face, because that often is really hard to do. Um, using that walk to really allow us to move from a place of hurt feelings and conflict to a place of re resolution. Well said. Uh, another vehicle, Danny, I'll turn to you. Follow up for Jen, Lisa or others. I think that's I think that's beautiful. I think that's you know it's such an opportunity at camp to you know to do things like that. And I think it as you said, just physically you know, sitting across from somebody and just going for a, for a walk and getting some exercise and being able to share with one another. I think that's a great great way to kind of work things out. And maybe more than one walk too. It might be a couple days worth of walks to kind of work things out. But um, I think that's that's beautiful. And I think there's so much that can be learned in this group from from one another. And I hope beyond this session today that um, people continue to share ideas. And it's so interesting to me in this new forum, there's so many opportunities and there's challenges. And I think if I was sitting in a room with 30 camp directors right now, it'd be anything but quiet right now. But I recognize in a conference in a Zoom, it's a, it's a different feel and a different vibe to it. Um, and I hope one day to be in Orlando with you all at another conference. Um, but in the meantime, I hope that these opportunities, you know, to some of the things we're talking about today to spur thinking and creativity and think about how to take some of the um, ideas that we've talked about here and turn them into sessions and values and within camp will, will really help you um, get through a great summer. Danny, we're, we're not there yet. Soon we'll, we'll um, work toward a close. Um, it's something that had come my way. Um, can you focus um, for a moment before we head toward a conclusion on what's not being given up, but what's being gained? What, what are we gaining? Uh, ground on by being back home to camp. That could be for, let's narrow that on staff. What do the staff gain this summer? I think, I, well, I think one, there's there's so many things that the staff gain, I think beyond the pandemic summer and in a pandemic summer, but you know, what comes first, you know, to mind was it is a chance of just kind of true connection, you know, in a physical space and a in a, in a more normal quote, quotes I'll put it right now because you know, it'll be transitions into the camp bubble, but in it, just to be, kind of be with each other and be present and to escape our phones, which has been so critical for years to do that. And um, yeah, could be a whole other session talking about that, but the constant news, getting the, the COVID updates and the numbers and what's going on, we're gonna be hopefully mostly removed from that this summer. And just to be able to live and be, and be present, I think is gonna be so important, certainly for our camp staff that are, 
you know, so connected all the time and for our campers. Um, just what, what a beautiful opportunity this is. I get so, I get chills thinking about this summer, you know, coming off of last year where I was had tears streaming down my face, you know, writing that blog. And now I think about um, the opportunities here, you know, for camp and wish I could be in that bubble this summer. I will not be getting my daughter's duffel bag and sneaking in the summer, you don't need to worry. But um, I just think for, for the staff and for the campers alike, I can't answer one without the other. I think it's just this opportunity where we've been so socially and physically isolated to be back together again. And hopefully it will be a transition out of a pandemic in the coming months. Yeah, I'm glad that question came to me, Danny. It's so much of what we've spoken of. Robin, I just saw your hand raised. Yeah, I think, um, Danny, I totally agree with you. And also, you know, thinking about staff and that so many of them are college or about to be college kids that mostly think about themselves, um, you know, to impress upon them, like, you know, what they're getting from themselves is so important. They get to be out in the fresh air and disconnected and everything you talked about, but what they're giving to these kids is like these kids, you know, I think kids always need camp, but they need camp this year more than ever after the year plus that they've gone through. And so they're really like, you know, as Jackie said before, you know, many of them experienced it as a camper, but now that they're giving such a gift that, you know, it's always a gift to be a, a staff person, um, but this year it's so much greater just because of the need and the, what these kids have gone through. So, you know, just to impress upon them that they're really, you know, making a difference, I think is, will be helpful. Yeah, I, I think so, Robin, I think that, that hits home for me. And, you know, one of the things I want to emphasize too, to think about is, and I talked about this at the beginning of our talk today, is about sense of purpose. And we, one of the things we know, and I've learned particularly with some of the generations younger than me, is that these generations really connect with sense of purpose. And that's a good thing. And I think there's such a higher purpose this summer more than others. And I think that could be a nice frame too, because you're going to have challenges this summer of staff that are challenging the bubble or question why we're doing the things we're doing. And at the core of camp is safety and safety is going to be more important than ever, if that's possible, to keep our bubble our camp safe. And so they might challenge you if they've been vaccinated or they feel like, why can't this exception be made? And you made the determination that you can't. But if you set that frame early on about the higher purpose of say, keeping our camp safe and that purpose is going to be able to provide what you know, so beautifully, Robin, about these experiences. And um, I think it sets a really nice tone for, for the summer and that kind of help you get all the way through with what we need to. You know, it's reminding me, uh, Danny, that when we were uh, talking previously uh, about the optimism of coming back to camp and how much has changed, I actually asked you this question. I said, what, what didn't change? Like, what's the same? What's the power of, of camp that still exists? And you started nodding your head and, and you were sort of smiling. And I said, well, let me ask this. Is, is there anything that you directly encountered something that came your way, a letter, a story, a call, anything that, that you would say, that's still it. it, it hasn't changed. And you smiled uh, uh, even more. And I'll turn to you, Danny, for the rest of the story. So yeah, it was, um, you, you brought that up to me the other day when we were talking, you said to me, you said, is there a letter or something that kind of reflects what's still the same at camp? And I kind of smiled and shared with you a story that I'll share with all of you. And um, I had my, my last summer that I was a supervisor at Tamarack and I was a supervisor of what projects our woodworking area. And the director asked me if I would take under my wing a British counselor who was first summer at camp and was really struggling, was on the verge of being fired that summer. He was yelling at kids. It was pretty, pretty an awful, awful situation. And she said to me, well, let's give him a chance. If you don't think he's gonna work out, say the word and we'll, we'll dismiss him. We don't wanna have somebody who you know, can't really handle working with kids in our camp. And so I, I took him on and very quickly working as a specialist, he started developing confidence. We were able to model for him what it's like to work with kids. And it turned out to be a successful summer. And I'd heard, um, that was my last summer working for camp, but I had heard years later that he had stayed on for several summers at camp. Um, well, fast forward to 2010 when I just got on Facebook. And so I was smiling because I was looking on Facebook and seeing if this letter was still in my message box and I found it. Um, right when I got on Facebook, this former camp staff found me 
and sent me this letter and it was um, really poignant about the power of how we all impact people and um, in what we do in camp. And so it's kind of funny to read too, because it's in British speak, um, but I'm going to read that. I found it. I'm going to read it, share it with everybody. So he said, evening, hope you and your family are well and good. Seems like a bloody long time since camp. Well, maybe because it was a long time ago. I kind of grown up a little since then, but then again, I'm now hanging out with small children. I'm a teacher. So maybe I haven't matured that much after all. Can I just say, Dan, cheers for everything back in 1992, as I think camp was a catalyst for me becoming a teacher, which I've now been for 10 years after being crap as a counselor in dorm three. You and projects was the confidence boost that I needed. So cheers. All my best, Alan. And, um, and I'm sure every one of you have your stories of countless people that you've influenced. And um, it was pretty, um, I get emotional kind of thinking about, about that. And um, so it's, it's, it's something that really speaks to what hasn't changed and the power of the relationship and the power of the camp experience. And so um, that's why I'm so passionate to this day as a parent, as a psychologist, as a um, lay leader at camp. And um, so I appreciate the chance to share that and, and being with everybody today. Danny, I'm going to uh, express such gratitude to you um, because it reminds me, um, Tamarack Camps opened in 1902. What year did your camp open? Think about it in your mind. And the reason that you remain open, I think, is because you've adjusted to changes throughout the course of time. Uh, change is actually the constant. This is a different change, I think, than what any of us have experienced. But change, that's common threat to each one of our camps. And Danny and I talked about that. And the power of change is resiliency. Danny and I spoke of that. He shared it more today. And the ability to cope and pivot, that's the video. And find still optimism, uh, the light on the field, uh, your playgrounds. So think about that. That's, that's what Danny and I were doing as we became motivated by the opportunity. Uh, and that awaits all of us, I think, uh, Danny, and you've allowed uh, me to feel even more motivated that we have opportunity perhaps that we've never had in the midst of something we've always had, the chance to create space for people to be and for us to be with them. Uh, and I'm so grateful for your words uh, before this call through the years and on this call in this conversation. Uh, anything else, Danny, from you as a final sentiment before I just say thanks to Andy and Janine and to you for allowing me the honor of asking you questions uh, that certainly resonate and are felt. So, Danny, with that, I'll give you the last word while I thank everybody for joining at the same time and being a very um, and being together, uh, even in our own separate camps and homes to share your stories. Danny, with gratitude, we end with you. Thanks, Lee, and thank you to JCCA, and thank you everyone for the opportunity to be with you and to be a part of this ongoing dialogue that will continue way, way beyond this session. And I would just leave you with embrace the moment. This is an exciting opportunity. It's the rebirth of, of some of these camps. or it's a chance to, um, as I said before, really work on healing and resiliency, which is so needed. Camp is needed more than ever. Um, it's, it's part of the solution to the mental health challenges that we face. It's a Part of what we need as a society is a culture to connect personally one-on-one -on -one, not across a computer which we all found ways to do this year as best we could so it's it for me it's very helpful to kind of come full circle and last year we wrote about kind of grieving or adapting or trying to get through this time and today i sit with you on the cusp of a, a new summer at camp and um so i wish you all the best um if you want to run ideas by me at some point in time i love being creative and talking ideas and something you came up with, I'm happy to be available to you. Um, my information will be out there. I think you can see and Andy's going to share it. So um, I wish you all the best and um, and excited for what lays ahead for, for you and your camp communities. Danny, uh, uh, we're not going to let you go with just the last word because the last word really has to be an official thank you from all of us and, I, and on behalf of everybody who gathered here today. Um, and from the association, I want to thank uh, both of you, Lee and Danny. And I, I had so many thoughts as this was closing up. I thought to myself, you know, the net, I've been thinking about the folks in the medical field on the front lines, you know, you, you folks in mental health and all the medical personnel. And I'm thinking about those people who are coming to camps. And I know that for many of them, it'll be a respite. I hope so. 
Um, but I, I, I'm thinking how lucky we are to have you or to have partnerships like you two have. And I, I, I remember when I was a camp director and I was way too young to be a camp director, but the minute my medical, my doctor came, you know, who would come sort of midway through orientation, I was like, oh, okay. That was my, you know, when I knew that person was there, I, was, I really leaned on that person. And I think this summer, people are going to really be leaning on folks like you. And I, I haven't had the chance to really thank, and I may cry, to really thank the medical profession and the mental health profession. We've, as a country, as a, as a world, leaned on you. So we can thank you here, um, Danny. Um, tell your colleagues, we all really appreciate that. And I wish for everybody and hope for everybody that they have this kind of team. I'm sure you do. I've heard people talk about them over the course of this year um, and we're really very grateful. So um, thank you. And thank you for coming today and thank both of you for the, for the time you put in in preparation. These, these are two superstar perfectionists and, uh, and it was really fun working with you. Thank you so very much. Your affection for each other is great. Your love of camp is great. And I think the next time I choose a doctor, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna look at the, where they went to medical school. I wanna know if they went to camp because I think that says a whole lot about them. I think it tells me almost more than I need to know um, in other areas. So it's really just a pleasure to be here with you and to spend the time with you. Um, Danny, I'm gonna underline that he's been very generous again and he has offered, he's letting us share his email address. Janine can throw that in. If you're interested, I, again, I hope everybody has their go-to person, but you know, if, if you need, if you have a question, Danny has volunteered to, uh, to allow us to give you his information. We're also gonna put in the blog that was written last year, which is very, I read it again last night. It's so poignant um, to think about where we were a year ago. So, you know, if you want a minute to shed a little bit of a tear and think, wow, how far we've come, how great it is, um, you can take a minute. Um, and we're going to put in the, uh, the link to the recording of the last uh, workshop we did at, with this cohort, which was with um, Maggie Feinstein, and it's a very helpful sort of coda. These two sessions together, I think we were able to do in a you know, limited amount of time, a lot of good groundwork for people heading into the summer. Um, I, am, I really want to thank everybody for coming and for sharing, because it really makes for a richer sessions when, session when people share. Um, and I can't not mention Aaron character from uh, EKC, who was also on that recording. Um, and I have to now do that. I would love to just say goodbye. Thank you. But we do have some other announcements for you. It was a beautiful note to end on. Uh, just a few more announcements. At 2.30, um, our enrichment electives. I, uh, I recommend that you take a look at what's there. There are lots of them. And lots of them are very, very relevant for camp. Um, four, four to five is Excellence Showcase. Tony from Interlochen will be presenting, I think, in the second slot at 4.30. And there's lots of terrific sessions where you can learn from other people who've done things and they've worked well and, and you can apply them to your, um, they're mostly JCC folks, but also camps. There might be things to take away. Um, and that vendor hall will be open again on th tomorrow at 1.45. Two things specific to us, just a reminder, I sent this only to camp directors. So if you're not a camp director, ask your director about it. We have a call May 10th with uh, uh, Dr. Craig Thomas of the CDC. Uh, Danny, you're welcome to join us if you'd like. Let me know, I'll send you the link. He'll be uh, answering questions. I don't know if it'll be a formal presentation, but he'll be, he wrote, he was part of the team that wrote the guidelines for the summer, for summer camps. Um, and I really encourage people to send me questions in advance. I know you're so busy, you have a million things to do, but uh, that way we can be more efficient with his time. And finally, for those who can join us on Friday at 10 a.m., I know it's tough on the West Coast, we'll be having that uh, Kabbalah Shabbat for the Jaffe Shlichin, where once again, we'll see the folks from Tamarack. This is Tamarack week Tamarack. at the JCCA. But um, I, I, we have such great partners out there and, and so many of the camps have stepped up to help out and volunteer to do stuff um, for this cohort. I think that that's where we're at. Uh, I want to thank you again. And if I don't see you on one of these two upcoming occasions, we wish everybody a fun and happy and healthy and safe summer. We're very envious that we don't get to go out into the country with you uh, next year. We'll come visit. Uh, thanks again, Lee, Danny, Janine, everybody. Have a great summer.